Nobody tells you how much you'll actually learn once you start working in IT. I'm not talking about what you're gonna learn in a textbook or what some certification course is gonna teach you. I'm talking about what you'll actually pick up on the fly while taking tickets. In my first year, I went from studying subnet masks and these random acronyms to troubleshooting VPN tunnels, rebuilding Active Directory users, configuring conditional access policies, replacing dead switches, fixing random Adobe errors, and figuring out why a printer would only work when the moon was full. That's when it hit me that I had learned more in one year on the job than any certification was ever going to teach me. So in this video, I want to take you through the actual technologies that I've touched in my first year and then what I learned from each. Networking, Active Directory, Entra, DHCP, DNS, firewalls, licensing, and the random chaos that turns you into a good IT tech. Quick background, my name is Jake. I am a system administrator at an MSP. An MSP is a managed service provider, so we give IT services to other companies, specifically banks and credit unions. And because I have this job, it means I touch basically everything. We have hundreds of clients as well, so every day is kind of just a grab bag of troubleshooting. One minute I'm digging through DHCP leases, the next minute I am troubleshooting a VPN tunnel, or I'm reconfiguring conditional access because someone locked out their entire sales team by changing a policy. Working in this kind of environment really teaches you to learn fast, and you stop relying on what the book taught you, and you start to see real world scenarios about why things actually break. This is where the real learning happens. So what I'm gonna do now is walk you through the real world tools and things that I'm troubled shooting in my day-to-day -day life. Think of this as a crash course of what you're really going to learn your first year in IT. Okay, so I'm going to go from simple to more complex. So the beginning of the video is going to be more T1 type stuff and the end of the video is going to be more system administrator, system engineer type stuff. So firstly, you're going to start in the endpoint and everyday chaos zone of IT. Here you're going to be looking at printers, drivers, SNMP, printer queues, port mismatches, uh, differences with the default gateway and DNS, usable IPs, mounting a printer in a different way, whether it's by TCP IP or through a printer share or a USB printer, and then a little bit of printer GPO deployment. In the beginning, you're also going to be looking at a lot of Outlook stuff, Outlook profile corruption, OSTs and PSTs, all things Outlook management, so opening and closing shared mailbox, how people have their folders structured, when people make mail rules that makes things disappear. You're also going to be doing a lot of application reinstalls, updates, uninstall, registry cleanup, right clicking on it in control panel, programs and features and clicking repair, Adobe licensing and sign in loops. Adobe is like the bane of my existence. I hate Adobe. Here I'm looking at docking stations, peripherals, USB-C issues, monitors and drivers that go along with all of this, living in the device manager, BIOS and firmware updates. Updates. Whether Lenovo, Dell Command, HP Smart, I think it's called, uh, doing a lot of SFC scan now and DISM commands. I'm doing disk cleanup, SSD swaps, a little bit of data recovery here and there. On the easy end, I'm also seeing issues with BitLocker keys, like enabling, disabling BitLocker, tracking down a key where I don't know where it is, and then troubleshooting failures with TPM, trying to surf through Event Viewer and see what went wrong. Early on, you're doing a lot of laptop re-imaging and deployment, installing softwares, again, in-place upgrades, remote troubleshooting, Windows Autopilot, doing a lot of local administrator cleanup and lapse management, so just logging into PCs with lapse passwords and understanding the difference between a local password password and a domain login, learning a ton about remote access tools, Screen Connect, Quick Assist, and just generally your remote monitoring and management solution. And then you've got a lot of line of business vendor app escalations where you've got some core software that's not working and you need to reach out to a vendor and the vendor helps you troubleshoot the issue with the software specifically. There's a lot of this. You talk to a lot of vendors. I also hate talking to vendors. And then you've got a ton of random user education moments where you have to explain why this person can't print PDFs, why something is the way it is or isn't the way it isn't. Okay, so after all that basics, we get into the core of IT which is identity and directory management, understanding and managing and using Active Directory users and groups, creation, offboarding, group nesting, how groups fit in with GPO and what they actually do. Of course, password resets and account lockouts. You've got Kerberos issues, bad credentials, persistent lockouts due to cached credentials on some device. You're getting into group policy like mapping drives, lapse renaming, folder redirection, startup scripts, best practices, using computer or user configuration, Linking, all of this with regard to group policy is very important. At tier one, you learn to read it. At tier two, system administrator, system engineer, you learn to actually configure it, create it, and deploy it safely. Microsoft management, distribution lists, shared mailboxes, 365 groups, how these all fit in together, what you can do with them, which one gets a calendar, how you can share them out, what group 
membership actually means, who can add and remove members, all of that type of stuff. Organizational unit, OU, structuring and redesign. Log on scripts and drive mapping for automation. Here you also really start learning about domain controllers. So domain controller health, replication, sysvol, time sync, schemas, IIS, which is Windows web server, and a bunch of other server roles and features. And then you've got some FSMO roles and domain functional level checks and upgrades. Now we're on to the third part, which is networking. And this is where you actually start to think like an engineer. You're starting to understand DHCP scopes, reservations, leases, lease times, lease expiry, scope exhaustion, and how DHCP generally works. We have Dora, discover, offer, request, acknowledge. This is actually very important and has come into play in actual real world troubleshooting for me probably more than five times. DNS, stale record cleanup, proxying through Cisco or VeloCloud, conditional forwarding, public DNS and different types of records like A, text, SRV, MX records, CNAME records, and then client side DNS and doing things like get DNS client server address or network reset or just understanding why things are not resolving correctly. VPNs, authentication, DNS integration, MFA, testing on different networks because maybe somebody has an IPS that's blocking VPN. So putting them on a hotspot and being able to test like that. And then what VPNs really do, like what a point to site VPN tunnel actually looks like and how to troubleshoot it. A little bit of wireless access points. So SSIDs, roaming and radius authentication authentication. Cisco, Meraki, Ubiquiti, Fortinet switches, VLANs, trunk ports, access ports, port flaps, firmware, power over ethernet status, uh, checking MAC address tables, switch virtual interfaces, SVIs, and what that actually looks like. DHCP relay, which again is going to play into that Dora that we were talking about earlier. A little bit of firewalls, firewall verification, checking ACLs, rule sets, NAT, SSL inspection, logging and setting up PCAPs, packet captures in order to be able to get data and use data to inform your decisions. SD-WAN and VeloCloud, quality of service, tunnel health, diagnostics, like how healthy does this actually look? And then a lot of physical layer troubleshooting. At the end of the day, even network engineers start with the physical layer. So it's basic cable swaps, looking at adapters, making sure that everything's plugged in where it's supposed to be plugged in, and then interface configurations as well. Lots and lots of network monitoring, latency alerts, bandwidth graphs, and NetFlow. The next domain that you learn a ton in is going to be Microsoft's cloud solution, Entra 365 hybrid IT, so on-premises Active Directory and how that syncs up to the cloud. You learn a ton about licensing assignments, Teams phone, Microsoft 365, E3 or E5, Exchange Online and how licenses affect what people can and can't do, MFA resets and password app removals, Intra ID conditional access you will do a ton of, whether that's MFA, device compliance, uh, certain exclusions, named locations or best practices for setting up conditional access. Exchange Online you're going to do a ton with, whether it's connectors, transport rules, uh, DKIM or SPF, message trace, certain permissions, and then mobile access policies and how that kind of fits in with Intune as well. So with regard to Intune, you're looking at device compliance, app deployment, and Windows enrollment in Autopilot. You're going to have a lot of SharePoint and OneDrive stuff. Permissions, sync issues, migrations from an on-premises file server to actual SharePoint online, using SPO with administrator credentials to manage who has permissions to sites. Azure AD Connect or Entra Connect, which is the agent that bridges on-premises Active Directory to the cloud and actually allows you to sync stuff up. You're going to be looking at this a ton. You're going to have sync troubleshooting. You're going to have failures. You're going to be configuring options. You're going to have devices that need to be rejoined to the domain or rehybrid joined. You're even going to be reinstalling Azure Active Directory Connect, which is fun and scary because it's very important. I did a little bit of Azure storage as well because a lot of our companies have stuff in Azure. File shares, access keys, SaaS tokens, key vaults, things like that. And then as you get into the upper echelons of IT, you've also got Azure infrastructure management, resizing VMs, network security groups, Azure backups, app gateways, key vaults, storage browser, how permissions let all of this work together, what you can and can't do, what you should and shouldn't do. Okay, and now we are moving on to the actual infrastructure part of IT. Servers, virtualization, backbone stuff. So firstly, you've got your Windows server roles, DHCP, DNS, file server, print server, IIS, like we talked about earlier. You learn a lot about file share permissions, NTFS, inheritance, audit failures, iCackles, and the takedown command. You learn a ton about print server management, uh, drivers, print queues, ports, TCP IP, WSD, and just general deployment. You learn about SSL certificate renewals, IIS, binding to listeners, PFX exports, chain validation, 
manipulating private keys, encrypting and unencrypting things and bundling it all together using OpenSSL. You learn a little bit about backup and replication jobs as well. Things like VM, retention, offsite copies, high availability, disaster recovery. A lot of VMware ESXi host manipulation and troubleshooting. Snapshots, data store configuration, cloning virtual machines, disk size management, and then virtual networking troubleshooting. Lots of patch management, especially at tier one, but also at tier two, tier three. WSUS, Intune updates, third-party patching, RMM solutions to patching. Again, lots of monitoring and alerting tools as well. Things like Avic, LionGuard, PRTG, PDW. Scheduling certain PowerShell jobs, whether that's cleanup scripts, software removals, some reports, formatting some data. So then we've got our security and compliance where you start to think like a security pro. MFA enforcement and exception handling. Conditional access design and rollout like we talked about. Device compliance policies. Is it encrypted? Is it updated? Is it healthy? Is it patched? phishing, incident handling, and user training, like teaching a user what a phishing email actually looks like and how we can verify these things. Using the sandbox, using VirusTotal, did you expect the message? Do you recognize the domain of the sender? Can you reach out at a known contact so that you can verify they actually sent it? A little bit of threat hunting and defender portal review. Definitely certificate life cycle tracking, things like Digicert, GoDaddy, and tracking this somehow. Local admin removal, scripts and reporting. Password policy enforcement and lockout analysis. So how often are you requiring your users to reset their passwords if you are? Uh, what does the general password health of your organization look like? And then some SIM log reveal as well. You're going to be using Sentinel, Splunk, Log Analytics Workspaces in Azure. And then lastly, of course, you have your automation and your scripting. Bulk user creation, reporting, cleanup, scripted GPO exports and HTML reports, log parsing, event viewer and automation using that, scheduled task automation for cleanup jobs, and then CSV imports for licensing or mailbox migrations. So all of this is stuff that I saw in my first year in IT. You can see it is a ton. And the truth is no certification can teach you or replicate what it feels like to actually troubleshoot these issues in the real world. You just learn so much by pushing so much volume. If you're just starting out and this seems like an absolute ton, don't worry about it. Of course, you're not learning all of this in your first week, but I made this video to get people excited about going into IT and seeing all of the things that you're gonna be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. It really is a plethora of different stuff and no two days look the same. After a while too, you start to understand how things fit together and troubleshooting just becomes a lot easier because even though I just gave you a list of 500 random different things that you look at, it's pretty easy to see an issue and hone in on what that issue actually has to do with. Hope this has been useful to you guys. Appreciate all the support lately. Be safe, be smart make some good decisions, and good luck in that first year of your IT job.